All right, finally, um, I want to talk about, quickly, about the Middle East, about Biden's um, moves in the Middle East over the last week. Uh, the United States bombed Iranian positions in Syria. I'm sure that all the supporters of Trump who, uh, who you know, were excited when Trump uh, attacked the Iranians, were excited uh, by Biden attacking the Iranians. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure that follows, right? Uh, that it's the action that's being celebrated, not the person, but you know, who knows? Uh, we also saw that the, um, the intelligence report coming out of the CIA this week that says that unequivocally the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia was the one who authorized the killing of uh, the uh, Saudi dissident in Turkey. Uh, you know, this was a, this was a, a big so-called human rights issue, and uh, which Trump didn't do anything about. It's going to be interesting to see what Biden does. He was very critical of Trump not doing anything about it. Uh, and Biden finally called the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and had a discussion with him. So, and of course, Bi Biden is trying to encourage Iran to rejoin the or to uh, recommit to the uh, Obama era Iranian deal, which was a terrible deal. Um, and uh, part of the bombing of Iranian targets in Syria was trying to egg them to do that, whether it works or not, is interesting. So anyway, what to make of all this? I mean, Biden in foreign policy is basically a traditional Obama Democrat. Uh, he, he's, he's not going to do anything radical or, straight, or, or, or principled or uh, you know, particularly strong. Uh, he wants Iran back into the nuclear deal because why is Iran still a threat? I mean, here's the thing, and this, and I apologize for being up Trump again, but but you, it's it's unavoidable if you're going to talk about politics and foreign policy. If you're not going to have Iran in the deal, remember the whole issue with Iran is the developing nuclear weapons. So we want to prevent them from developing nuclear weapons. The only there's only one way to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons, in my view, right, and that is to destroy their capacity to do so either by replacing the regime or by destroying the capacity to do so. That is, by bombing every single facility that might present the potential of creating new material into oblivion, right? And doing that to every single facility in the country and redoing it every time they rebuild it and attempt to redo it, right? That's the only way to stop them. The Obama administration pretended like and was under the illusion that they could cut a deal with the Iranians, uh, but it was a funny deal, a deal that after 10 years when it expired would actually, in a sense, permit the Iranians to develop nuclear weapons. So it was an awful deal, and it wasn't a particularly verifiable deal. It wasn't a deal that you could go in and verify. Trump, on the other hand, believed that if he just, I don't know, pounded his fist on the desk, put sanctions on the Iranians, kill one of their generals, that would stop the Iranians from developing nuclear weapons. So he believed something that was just as fictitious, just as delusional, just as absurd and ridiculous as Obama. Now comes in Biden, who's seen that Trump's, by the way, the Iranians are actively developing nuclear weapons right now, based on all intelligence reports, because they're not part of this deal, so they don't have to play any games. Now, their economy's in tatters, and they suffered dramatically under COVID, but religious fanatics don't care about suffering. So now comes Biden, who also wants to stop them from developing nuclear weapons. He believes in the Obama method, but he can't just eliminate the sanctions that Bush imposed. He has to get the Iranians to agree to join. I mean, it's complicated, right? He's got all these moving pieces. 
in the meantime, the Iranians are clearly attacking U.S. positions in Iraq and in Syria. Why we're still there, I don't know, because I remember, I remember that Trump promised us over and over and over and over and over again to bring the troops home. So why are the troops still in Syria and in Iraq? But they are being attacked by Iranians. Other than killing the one general, Trump did nothing about it. Zero, zilch, in the name of America first and in the name of Make America Great Again. He did not protect our troops any better than Obama did or than Bush did. So now Biden has that situation. What? Anyway, it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess. So now the Iranians are still attacking our troops. Biden has to show that he's somewhat tough. So he's attacked some Iranian targets in Syria because he doesn't want to do it in Iraq because the Iraqi government would be pissed off at America if we attacked them in Iraq. And he wants to be nice with the Iraqi government. So he did it in Syria, whose government we don't care about anyway. And I'm sure he got permission from Putin to do it because the Russians control the airspace in Syria. And as far as I know, none of the Russian batteries launched uh, ground-to-air missiles against the U.S. aircraft. So the whole thing is a frigging mess. It's a joke. But it's all these games that politicians play with big weapons and, and, and huge amount of power. Huge amount of power. At our expense. With our money. With our lives. All in the name of making America safe when it's not making America safe. It has nothing to do with Amer making America safe. It has nothing to do with America first. It has nothing to do with making America safe. It has nothing to do with any of that. Now remember too that Trump danced with the Saudi Arabian sheiks, was unbelievably friendly to Saudi Arabia, uh, and uh, when uh, this this New York Post, New York Times, sorry, Washington Post um, commentator was murdered, uh, Saudi commentator was murdered by the Saudis, did nothing, uh, did not condemn the, the Saudi government, did not really go after the Saudi government, did not have any sanctions on the Saudi government, nothing, Democrats condemned him. Now Biden is in there, what's he going to do? Nothing. He's going to dance with the sheiks. Yes, we withdrew our support for the Saudi attacks in Yemen. Who cares? He's going to dance with the sheiks. Because the fact is, the, 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 the foreign policy of Trump and the foreign policy of Obama-Biden is not, not that different. Maybe with the exception of Russia. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Biden called Putin before the attacks on Syria because he, he didn't want the Russians, who control the air defense systems in Syria, to launch against American airplanes. That would not have been good. So he called him, and he got it just like Trump did. Trump would have done the same thing. You call Putin, and you say, hey. So foreign policy is the same. No difference. No principles. No America first. No American uh, interest. No perspective on what American interests are. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, 
the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>